How many grams of calcium metal are produced by the electrolysis of molten CABR2 calcium bromide using a current of 30 amps for 10 hours? We're describing the operation of an electrolytic cell here, and we'd like to extract that calcium metal from the calcium bromide salt. I've drawn an electrolytic cell to give some background on this problem. What's going to happen is inside our bath of molten CABR2, we have, some, we have two inert electrodes which I have hooked up to a battery. Now because the positive side of the battery is facing this electrode, uh, free electrons from that side are going to travel up this wire and to the suddenly more positive side because opposites attract and electrons are negatively charged. Meanwhile, we can have electrons repelled from the negative terminal of the battery attracted to the all of a sudden more positive electrode on the right side of the bath. And that's going to create this situation where all of a sudden this electrode is now relatively positive and this electrode is now relatively negative. What's going to happen because of the sudden charge differential is that calcium and bromine ions formerly attached to each other in the molten salt will have the motivation to migrate as follows. You can have bromine ions which carry a negative one oxidation state starting to migrate to the positive side and you can have calcium ions with the positive two oxidation state start to migrate to the negative side. So we're going to have a deposit of calcium building up over here and also the bubbling up of bromine gas over here. Zoom in on the calcium side and I'll do that specifically because we are talking about calcium in this problem and we can talk about the specific redox reaction being described here which is that calcium 2 plus ions are going to mingle with two electrons and create an electrically neutral and therefore stable calcium metal in its natural zero oxidation state. That implies that it would be helpful to think about the electrons that are being transferred here and then use that information to figure out what's going on with the calcium that's being formed. So we're told that a current of 30 amps is being passed through this thing and that this is occurring over a time of 10 hours. Like so many situations in physics and chemistry, hours are not helpful. Most of the formulas are given in terms of seconds, so I'd rather think about this 10 hours as being 10 times 3600 or 36,000 seconds. And now what am I going to do with these things? I'm going to think about charge and how current is charge over time. Or rather charge passing through a unit area over a certain amount of time and thus how charge is equal to the current times the time. Taking these two numbers, the 30 times the 36,000 is going to give me 108... Um, rather 1,080,000 coulombs. Why talk about coulombs? Because I can get from the coulombs being transferred, the charge being transferred, and talk about the electrons being transferred by way of Faraday's constant. If I take 1,080,000 uh, coulombs and divide them by the Faraday constant, which is the 96,485 coulombs per electron, that gives me a grand total of 11.193 moles of electrons that were transferred. This is helpful because of this equation which describes how for every two moles of electrons transferred, you get out one mole of calcium, uh, of calcium atoms. So we have our 11.193 moles of electrons, which I'm going to divide by two according to the ratio here, 
which means that I can have 5.597 moles of calcium atoms at the end of this charge period. And of course they asked for grams because they must always do that. Using the molar mass of calcium I can take 5.597 moles and multiply that by the molar mass 40.08 grams of calcium in one mole of calcium. Cancel out the moles and get just about 224 grams of calcium as a result of the electrolysis.